In this video, we'll be taking apart the OnePlus 15. The OnePlus 15 is using micro arc oxidation to create a ceramic grade coating on the metal frame. It feels great to hold in your hand and should provide great protection for everyday wear and tear. If you're interested in seeing more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and click on the notification bell so you'll be notified once I upload a new video. Also, if you need any tools, there are links in the description. To start off, we'll need to remove the SIM tray. Looking at the SIM tray, we can see a red rubber gasket around the opening. Now heat needs to be applied to the back plate using either a hair dryer or a heat gun to loosen up the adhesive underneath and then a pry tool can be used to pry the back plate off. I prefer to use a hair dryer since there is less of a chance of damaging any of the components inside by overheating them. Here's a look at the fiberglass backplate. The glass camera lens covers can be replaced by applying heat and gently prying them off. But if you want to replace the entire camera bezel, there are four Phillips screws on the other side which need to be removed in order to replace the camera bezel. The camera bezel also has antenna contacts which make a connection with a board via these gold contacts. When removing the back plate, do note there is additional glue or adhesive around the camera section which will require the use of additional heat when prying off. There are 18 Phillips screws which need to be removed. The wireless charging coil and motherboard cover can now be lifted up, but be careful since there is still a flex cable attached to the main board. So taking a closer look, we can see the infrared or IR blaster, the laser autofocus, the dual LED flash, the rear ambient light sensor, some antenna flex cables including the NFC antenna, as well as the wireless charging coil. There is also a large area of graphite film to help transfer heat. Here's a look at the other side. The battery cable can now be disconnected, followed by the rest of the cables. Now when it comes to prying off the battery, there is a pull pouch provided to help you pry it off. Here's a better look at the 7300 milliamp hour battery. This is a dual cell battery which incorporates 15% silicon content. Also looking at the other side, we see a rubber gasket around the connector for the battery. The coaxial cables on the bottom right side of the board can be disconnected by just popping them off. There's a single Phillips screw which is holding down the main board.
Taking a look at the main board, we can see a 50 megapixel main, ultra wide, and telephoto lens. The main and telephoto camera have OIS or optical image stabilization. There's a secondary microphone underneath the covered shield on the top corner, some copper tape and graphite film over the shields to help transfer heat, as well as rubber gaskets around the connectors. The camera cables can be disconnected by just popping them off, and there's a metal shield which can be popped off over the main camera connector. Now there's a sticker in the center of the board which is covering a hole, and once peeled back, we can see that they inject the thermal compound in between the two boards, since this is a dual layered board, to get the thermal paste or thermal compound in between the two boards and behind the processor and components which are located on the other side to better help transfer heat from underneath those components. Taking a look at the other side, we can see the 32 megapixel front facing camera as well as additional copper tape or film on the back shield and thermal paste top transfer heat. Once the copper film has been peeled back, we see additional thermal paste on top of the RAM which is seated over the Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 5 processor as well as the ROM or onboard storage. We also see thermal pads on top of these chips. Here's a better look with the thermal paste removed. This is the bottom speaker assembly. These two flex cables connect the main board to the subboard, as well as the flex cable for the screen. So if you needed to replace the screen, you'd have to remove the back plate, the screws on the bottom speaker assembly and the speaker assembly itself giving you access to the screen cable, at which point you'd have to disconnect the flex cables and remove the subboard giving you access to the rubber gasket by the screen cable. You would then remove the red rubber gasket, heat up the front of the phone where the screen is to loosen up the adhesive underneath, pry the old screen off, apply new adhesive and reapply the new screen making sure you run the flex cable back to the opening in the mid frame and reassemble the phone. Taking a look at the subboard or charger port board, we can see the dual microphones, one of which is covered by a shield, the charger port which has a red rubber gasket around it, as well as rubber gaskets around these connectors. The SIM reader is located on the other side. This is the linear haptic feedback or vibrator motor, and it's held down with some adhesive, so if you need to replace that, just apply some heat and gently pry it off. There is also a rubber gasket and mesh filter over the speaker opening on the frame, as well as filters over the microphone openings. Now when it comes to this phone, if you're to accidentally insert a SIM injector tool in the wrong hole, you wouldn't need to worry since both the filters and the microphones are seated above the holes and they wouldn't get damaged. Also, the microphone holes are shaped a little bit differently on this phone to make it more difficult for people to confuse with the SIM tray hole. Once the flex cables have been peeled back, we have a better look at the very large vapor chamber which runs underneath the battery, as well as the motherboard. This is the flex cable for the power button, and this one's for the volume keys. If you need to replace either of those, you'd have to lift up and remove the black plastic brackets from the slits or cutouts inside of the frame. Also, if you need to replace the buttons, you would have to lift up and pull out the black plastic placeholders in order for the buttons to be released and pulled out. The same goes for the button on the other side. The proximity and ambient light sensor board is located here, and this is a pretty large earpiece speaker which is located on the top. Both the speaker and the proximity sensor board are held down with some adhesive, so if you wanted to replace those, just apply some heat and gently pry them off. For the repairability score on this phone, I give it an 8.5 out of 10. Now it's time to put the phone back together. Once everything's back together, apply new adhesive and reapply the back plate. Flip over the phone, power it on, and you're done. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one.